And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're featuring some of our favorite beef recipes brought to us by the expert chefs at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Let's see what they've got cooking. Welcome back. Up next, Moho Beef Kebabs. We're going to start on another quick recipe that does the sirloin and a little bit of that great cumin that, that Steve brought back for us. The name of this recipe, again, is Moho Beef Kebabs, and we're going to start with the sauce. It's got a little bit of acid in it and a nice fresh citrus flavoring. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our orange. Here I've got just a half of a regular orange, and I'm going to use this zester. Now, there's a lot of different zesters that you can use. Um, you can do something that goes on, on the counter like this, or you can use what's called a reamer if that's easier to use, too. But you'll need the juice of about one orange in here. So I'm going to dump our orange juice into this bowl. Again, Laura showed you that you could use a mixing bowl if that's easier for you. I'm going to go ahead and use just this little bowl that we've got here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with some limes. Give us that nice um, combination of the, the orange juice and the lime juice with a real nice citrus flavoring. A little bit of that will go in here. Our next or our first spice that we're going to talk about today is, is oregano. Um, this is just one of your, your oregano's that you, one of your uh, seasonings or herbs that you can find in the grocery store. You can either use fresh or dried, and that's the same for parsley here. If you want to use dried, you're, you're more than welcome to. Just know that if you're going to use dried, you need to use a little bit more because your ratio is about one third um, from your dried to your fresh, fresh herbs. So here I'm going to use just about a a teaspoon and tablespoon of this stuff. I'm going to add that into our, to our mixture. Get these out of the way. Uh, this is a little bit of fresh parsley that's just been chopped up. Again, you can use dried if, if you prefer, whatever you have in the pantry. Um, this will give you a nice texture. If you want to do all of this in a food processor or a blender, you can do that as well if you don't want to hand, hand chop any of that. Um, we're also going to use a little bit of garlic in this recipe. It calls for minced garlic. There's a couple tricks with garlic. If you want to buy it in the jar, you're more than welcome to. Or if you want to get a whole clove of it, if you have it at the house, um, just pull off a cube or two. When it still has its, its outer shell on it like this, you go ahead and put it on your cutting board. And you give it a, a kind of a nice firm whack like this. What that does is it'll squish your, your shells off the outside. And what you're also looking for is there's usually a very, very center piece in garlic. And a lot of times when they're, they're more ripe, the, it'll be bright green. This one you can see just a bit of green on the inside. That's what gives you bitterness when you're using garlic. So I always like to take that very center section out and get rid of it before you chop up the rest of your garlic. This calls for a whole clove, so I have some done. I'm going to go ahead and add this into that as well. Get this out of the way. Um, our, our next ingredient on the list here is cumin. This is the, the cumin that Steve picked up. I love cumin. Um, I kind of use it in all different kinds of recipes at home. I, I usually use it in guacamole first, but it gives you that great, that great flavoring to so many dishes. I'm going to start whisking up this here. Now this is kind of where if you need to make more dressing or less dressing, you can do that by the amount of olive oil that you add. This, you want enough sauce that you can drizzle it over the top of the meat meat and rice at the, end of the, at the end of the dish, or if you want to be able to use this as a dipping sauce, you can want some of that here too. So I'm going to add just a couple teaspoons. The last ingredient that we're going to add to that is salt, and I'm going to add just a pinch of it, and then I'm going to go ahead and taste your dressing. Now the best thing is to make this first and then let it set. Keep in mind that as you add salt at the beginning and as it sets, the salt will kind of dissolve in. So don't add too much salt up front because that's not something that you can take back. You can always add more salt. Oh, that citrus is great. I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to clean this up. And we're going to move in to start making some kebabs. So our first ingredient I'm going to talk about is the sirloin. And this is a nice one inch thick cut that Steve brought for us. And this will get a little bit of salt and pepper on it and get cubed up for, for the kebabs. I'm gonna start with all my fresh vegetables first. Make sure that I have clean hands to go to the vegetables and I don't wanna use raw meat. So these, um, 
you take and clean your purple onions. You're just going to make sure that you pull the, the skin off and give them into nice, nice size. You're going to want to make sure that you can thread them onto the kebabs, but you don't want them too big where they're, all you're getting in the kebab is an, a giant onion piece. So depending on the size of your onion, some, sometimes you'll need one large one, sometimes you'll need you know, one and a half small ones, but just make sure that if you like a lot of onion, get a larger one, and if you don't like as much, you can get a smaller one. I've already cut up some of these nice slices. I'm going to do one more little slice on these. And the same with limes. Take one nice lime, give it a, a cut in half, and then again in half. And then each of that half will get taken into one more half. All right. This is the tricky part. I'm going to get these guys out of the way. And we're going to get moved to our favorite center of the plate. Um, again, this is the sirloin. And what I'm going to do is, most of the time when you buy that, that thicker um, package of sirloin like Steve bought, you will have a little bit of fat on the outside. That's fine. You know what? When we're, we're taking in the kebabs, just trim it off the outside. And it's like it's not even there. So here we're going to cut these into to nice one inch cubes. Remember that the most important thing is that you cut everything in equal sizes. It's going to be really, really important when we go to the grill. Um, if you have pieces that are really large and some pieces that are really small, you're not going to get an even cooking process. And when we get all these kebabs put together and, and go to the grill, they only need about eight minutes. And if you make your pieces of steak too large, they're going to be really rare. And if you make them too small, then they're going to be more overdone. So if you like your beef more to the medium well, you can make them smaller. And if you really do like that, that medium well, then you know stick to that one inch cube so that, that you have the appropriate cooking time. This is a, a real easy, you know, just cube them. If you want to use one inch, the three quarter inch, we'll get all of these guys trimmed up. There's a little bit of connective tissue in sirloin, but when you're making kebabs, just make sure you cut that part out. It's not a big deal. All right, so here I got some nice chunks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building these skewers. Now, the skewers have a little bit of, of your vegetables and a little of the acid from, from the limes. They also have some great fresh tomatoes. And one of the important things as you build your kebabs is to make sure that you have some of the acid from the lemons touching the meat. And it's going to impart that flavor throughout the kebab as, as the meat heats and cooks. So. Skewer. Um, if you want to use wood skewers, you're more than welcome to. Just make sure you, that you soak your skewers. If you uh, don't keep wooden skewers in water, then when you put them on the grill, they'll burn. And nobody needs to try and pull off individual onions or, or lemons or limes off the grill. So I always start with a piece of meat. It kind of gives me a nice anchor point about um, at the end of this. So I'm going to start with a piece of meat. And then I'm going to do a lime. Again, you want to try and face that lime towards the meat. You can either do them this way. Um, I think that they stay on your skewer better if you put your skewer through this rind. If you prefer, you can go this way. Just know that as these cook, sometimes it gets hot and your limes will fall off this side. If you need to use a little knife to kind of break through that and twist through that rind, go ahead and do that. But then you have a nice contact between the meat and the and the citrus. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and steal one of these pieces of onion and that can go on here. Kind of, whoops, um, kind of skewer them all the way down and push them tight together. Um, everything will shrink a little bit when it goes on the grill so by keeping them close together they, they'll share all their juices. Next I'm going to do is go ahead and use an onion or I'm sorry, a piece of sirloin and then I'm going to go back to the, the lime Get that guy so they use touching on there. And then again, and you figure that each person will eat about a skewer. So if you need to up this recipe or scale it down, um, you can kind of use that for a party. If you say, you know, I want to make sure that everybody has a skewer or um, I want to do mini skewers, you can buy small wooden skewers to do this for a party if you, if you want to make sure that they're done on appetizer plates. I'm going to do one more piece of, of this and I'm going to add it then to our other plate. As you see, I, I've done a couple of them here. Um, for you. We're also going to do cherry tomatoes on skewers. Um, these tomatoes cook a lot uh, shorter amount of time, so we want to do the tomatoes because they're only going to need to be on the grill for two to three minutes, where these guys will need to sit on there for eight to ten. So I'm going to do a whole skewer of the tomatoes. These guys, um, they have grape tomatoes, sometimes these are called cherry tomatoes. Pick which ones you like. If you want to 
I wouldn't recommend using a whole like a plum tomato or a grape tomato or a aroma tomato just because when you cut into them all the seeds are going to fall and they're going to be all over the grill which is kind of messy. Um, but you can also use the yellow cherry tomatoes. It'll give you just a little bit more color as you go into the recipes. I'm going to pull these off. One thing I'm going to do real quick is, is sprinkle these with a little bit of black pepper. Um, the recipe recommends that you put the, a little bit of black pepper on the meat before you skewer them. But you can kind of add them on the, on the back side if you need to as well. So I'm going to get these on the grill. We're going to do a little tomato and a little bit of beef. Um, we're doing this inside on a grill pan. If you want to do this during the holidays and you don't want to be outside, then this is a great grill pan to be able to do that. Just make sure like any grill outside that you don't overcrowd your grill pan because you'll get, um, you won't get the nice caramelization that you'll have when you, when you don't overcrowd it. I'm going to pop back and wash my hands back here. Um, the most important thing to remember is that when you're dealing with raw meat, before you switch to any um, finalized or, or something that won't be heated before it goes to the table, it's really important that you wash your hands for food safety. Same kind of if we were to have used any of that marinade before, um, we wanted to make sure you would reserve some separately as marinade and then separately to go onto the table. Um, it just keeps all your guests and, and your family safe. So. I'm going to give these one quick turn. Those tomatoes are probably getting close. Um, Laura talked to us about the importance of, of not pulling your meat off until it's ready. Um, we like to say that the beef talks to you. It's going to let you know when it's ready to come off um, and you take it off too, too early. Uh, it just, it's going to tear and it kind of loses a little bit of that moisture, moisture in there. Um, we have a little bit uh, more, I, I like to use my fingers on this. The, the heat inside it isn't as bad, but you can also use tongs. Just make sure you get a big enough tong to flip this. They need just another couple minutes, so I'm gonna let those guys work. Work for another couple minutes, and I have some that are already done, and we'll, we'll start plating some up for you guys to see what this looks like. Um, again, we're gonna start here, and I'm gonna put a little bit of this sauce that we made, that mojo sauce, in this bowl as a dri dipping so that we can, we can dip or put this over our rice later. Get that guy out of the way. The other thing that we're pairing this dish with is, is a dirty rice, or um, you can do some sort of a, a couscous, anything if you really wanted to use a white rice or a barley, you could do that too. This is uh, a little bit of white rice and, and black beans. Um, it's kind of that Jamaican style, um, or the dirty rice, some people call it Louisiana style. It, it pairs real nice with that citrus is what we're looking for. So I'm going to give you a nice little mound here. And then I'm going to pull up a little bit of these guys. Now it's, it's really up to you when you're plating dishes for the table. You can either do an individual plate and pull off the individual um, pieces of meat, put them in a bowl so that someone doesn't have to have metal skewers at the table. If you're feeding kids, I'd recommend that you probably take them off so that they don't start having sword fights or something like that at the dinner table. But um, if it's an appetizer style, this is probably going to be better. But each person will get a, a whole skewer like this, and then again, those skewers of tomatoes that need a little bit less time um, will get on there. I'm going to go ahead and pull all these tomatoes off. The big difference too when using a metal skewer, your meat will come off much easier than it does on a wooden skewer. So that's another tip to think about if you, you know, you prefer one or the other. Uh, metal ones do, the food comes off just a little bit faster. Check out details of this recipe at cattleman to cattleman.org. They're out there, lurking on your pasture, just waiting to infect your cattle as they graze. Cattle worms cost you money, but a Safeguard strategic deworming program allows you to deworm your cattle and lower worm burdens on your pasture, resulting in improved pregnancy rates and heavier calf weights. Plus, there's a Safeguard form for every operation. So start killing parasites where they lurk. Talk to your animal health provider today about a Safeguard strategic dewormer program. Safeguard. Think strategically. Act decisively. If you've got a bad case of new tractor fever, we've got the cure. It's the Green Fever sales event at your John Deere dealer. Get hot deals like 0% financing for 48 months or big cash discounts on select John Deere utility tractors and hay tools. Give in to your Green Fever and get to your John Deere dealer today. Offer ends January 31st, 2011, subject to approved credit on John Deere credit installment plan. Restrictions supply. See dealer for details. Win a Ford pickup or other great prizes during the Green Fever Sweepstakes. See your John Deere dealer for details. 
Join Superior at the 2011 Cattle Industry Convention and the NCBA Trade Show February 2nd through the 5th in Denver, Colorado. Come on by for more information on our internet bidding program, Superior Click to Bid, and the new weekly internet auctions, or our television series, The American Rancher and The American Dairy, or just talk business of buying and selling cattle the Superior way. Come by and visit our booth number 1097. We'll highlight the past, the present, and the future of Superior. For more details, go to superiorlivestock.com. Right, sometimes. Left, sometimes. Dull, never. Steve Cornett's Out to Pasture column brings out the opinions among readers who agree and disagree with his unique perspective on industry issues, such as gypsa, estate taxes, marketing, and more. Join the conversation and read Steve's Out to Pasture blog on the web at www.beeftoday.com, in Beef Today's Cattle Drive e-newsletter, and in Beef Today magazine. If that cold weather nip in the air has you ready for some comfort food, this next beef recipe should be right up your alley. And with us today, we have Laura Hagen from the uh, culinary team at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Tell us about this slow cooking recipe you've uh, okay. brought to us today. Okay. Well, when, when I get really, really tired of cooking, mm -hmm. one of the best things you can possibly do is bring out the slow cooker <laughs> and let it cook for you. Okay. Um, the nice uh, thing about it is that you can actually put it on in the morning and you can yeah. put it on low and you can actually cook for about eight or nine hours while you're at work. Just when you get home, it's ready to go. That's perfect for a lot um, of family. And also, if you want to use something like this, you can turn it up a little higher if okay. you're on the weekend and you maybe only need four or five hours. Gotcha. Um, Put it up, uh, the temperature up a little bit, and all of a sudden you've it's got a, a great meal. A little fancier well. slow cooker than we have, but I know what it you're is. talking about. It is, yeah. You'll see them. They usually have a ceramic pot in yeah. um, inside, so as you can see, little ceramic pot. Sure. But um, they're pretty much doing all the same thing. Yeah. It's just some of these are, are more counter friendly in terms of people wanting to leave them out and that kind sure. of thing. Sure. Um, so we're doing a really cool recipe. Yeah. This is actually kind of Greek inspired. Really? It's, yes. Okay. It's a Mediterranean beef, and we're actually using some mixed olives and some feta cheese. Very good. So that's good. kind of bringing in those Greek flavors. Yeah. So. So what we're basically doing is we're going to take our ingredients, which yep. we'll talk about, and we're going to put them all in the crock pot, mix it up a little bit, and then we're going to put the lid on and turn it on. That's perfect. That's, That's easy. That's it. So what we're going to go to first is actually our stew meat. This okay. is actually beef for stew. So you see that. Yeah. And, um, and you just uh, go ahead. Do you have to trim it or, or well, what Well, sometimes what you do is you'll find this, um, you'll find it in, in really, really large chunks. Yeah. Sometimes it won't be chunked and you actually cut it yourself. Yeah. Um, usually, you know, try to keep a consistent size, size. because they're all going to be cooking the same amount of time. Sure. So it's nice to have a consistent size. So okay. we're simply going to just take this. Yep. Yeah. About how much of that? This is actually about two pounds. Okay. And we're going to throw that right in there. Begin with that in our slow cooker. And yeah. a lot of times what people will do, and people have probably seen this in recipes, where you actually um, put a little bit of flour on your meat, oh. and you might put it into either a pan on the stove, kind of brown or maybe it. even in your crock pot, um, and brown it a little bit. Okay. Depends on whether or not you're using a high temperature or a low temperature. And that will give it a little more caramelization, it'll give a little bit more color. Okay. This will tend to be, if we look at um, our final version, It'll tend to be kind of a brown, okay. fairly brown dish, and that's okay. why you want to utilize some really fun olive colors to bring out some color in the dish. Very so good. there's our two pounds of meat. Yeah. And then we're Tomatoes. actually going to go to, these are simply um, canned tomatoes, two cans, okay. 14 and a half to 15 ounce cans. And basically these just have a little bit of um, chili, a little bit of green pepper. Oh. And so they just they just have kind of a nice little chili seasoning. Already in them. Already in them. Okay. So you don't have to doctor them up at all. Okay. And actually if you wanted to change kind of the way that this um, this this whole dish actually worked, you could actually put in like an Italian style tomato. Oh, okay. You know, maybe add a little bit of different flavor, oregano and some basil and that kind of thing. Okay. So oh. we're gonna put those in. Yeah. Dump those That's right in. Easy here. so far. I can run really a can opener. Easy, yep, see. Anyone can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what about these olives? I'm not used to putting olives in a beef dish. Yeah, well, olives are, the nice thing about olives is that they have a really nice briny saltiness. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to put salt, a ton of salt okay. into your food, you're using the brine of this to actually season your food. Excellent. Now, you may take it out and decide that you want to put a little bit more salt in it to okay. your own uh, flavor. But what's nice is that they do have a real natural flavor. Sure. Um, these are actually mixed olives. So okay. when we work with these, um, you know, you're using them really for color and for mm. flavor. Mm -hmm. These have some Kalamata olives and then some green olives. Um, Kalamata are Greek, so okay. of course we're sticking with our Greek um, kind of ingredients. Yes, makes sense. And I'm just going to show you all you do, buy them pitted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So pitted, literally slice them 
in half. Very good. Easy. Throw them in there. Sure. Super, super easy. Sure. And actually, I think I was going to put those in first. Okay. Get those in there. Get those in there. Because I want to get this cooking. going. Absolutely. And then we'll Just talk a little up, bit about huh? the olives. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that is pretty much it. Yeah, that, that is super easy, isn't it? No yep. more spice or seasoning. Um, actually, we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper, but oh, we're yeah, talking okay. a quarter a little bit. teaspoon of pepper yeah. and about a half a teaspoon And no of more salt. additional liquid. Nope, that's it. You've got so much liquid in those tomatoes, yeah. and as they cook, they're going to release even more liquid. And you're also putting a lid on here, yep. so you're getting all that condensation on top, and it's going to keep dropping down. That's great. So just like when you water a plant and yeah. cover a plant when you go on vacation. Fantastic. Um, this I wanted to show you real yeah. quick. This is actually feta cheese. Oh, yeah. So this is a Greek cheese. Okay. It's just a very um, easy cheese to get at the grocery store. You yep. can actually get it in a brick or you can get it um, crumbled okay. already just in a little tiny, like kind of a butter container. Yep. And that is actually what you're going to put on top of the stew. Afterwards. After you're done. Okay. Yep. And, and so we don't want to melt this. We just want to use this as kind of a pre accent done, it to looks the color. like uh, we've, we've got a beautiful dish here. And what did you add to this? Uh, as this a bread? actually has some Greek bread, pita bread. Okay. And all we did is we threw it on the grill. So that we got a little crispiness to it, it's and then good. we put it on some basmati rice, which is um, kind of an Indian flavor rice. Mm -hmm. It's um, super super easy to grab any kind of rice that you like. Right. I mean, you can do brown rice if you want to stay kind of a little more healthy with the whole grain. Mm -hmm. And then we just put the stew on top, and top it with the feta cheese. Well, that is good. I'm not always a fan of olives, but I actually like that. Yeah, I think mixed in, they, they mm -hmm. kind of change a little bit. They're That's not very they're good. not so obvious. And super easy, as you said. Yes, absolutely. So. For more information on this and other great, easy recipes, just visit us at cattlemantocattlemen.org. It's great. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth, and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm also a rancher here in northern Colorado and a proud member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. I hope you'll join me in my home state for the 2011 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Denver, February 2nd through the 5th. I consider it an event that's critically important to my success as a cattleman, and it's a whole lot of fun. There's a great lineup of speakers, including the highest ranking New York City firefighter to survive the 9-11 attacks, and former presidential advisor, Carl Rove. Plus, some pretty exciting events, including a tailgate party at Invesco Field at Mile High and our finale evening event with Larry the Cable Guy. This is one event you don't want to miss. Join me for the 2011 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. February 2nd through the 5th in Denver, Colorado. Register today at beefusa.org or give us a call at 303-694-0305. Welcome back. Are you ready for some football? Just in time for the football season, we have a great beef recipe that's perfect for those football tailgate parties. And with me today, we have Shanoa French with the uh, NCBA Culinary Services team. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Shanoa, this looks a little different than most tailgate parties I've been accustomed to, but tell us what we're going to cook today. We're going to kick it up just a notch, and we're going to do beef satay and a spicy peanut sauce. Wow. So okay. the great thing about this recipe is you can do a lot of stuff at home in the morning, yep. stick it in the cooler, get down there, set up the grill, and then have dinner ready for kickoff. Perfect. So we're going to start here with our, our peanut sauce. Okay. We'll get that done. This would be started ahead in the morning and then sent um, just in a cooler and a Ziploc, whatever you want to do. Okay. We're going to start with creamy peanut butter. I've got that. This just here is a half a cup of, of creamy peanut butter. Okay. We're going to stick it in a bowl. Yep, that's easy to find. Yep. Even college kids have peanut butter. Absolutely. <laughs> um, next, we're going to add in some soy sauce. Okay. This is just a couple teaspoons of soy sauce. If you want to use low sodium, we recommend that, but if you don't have it, you don't need to. Okay. Um, next is going to be milk. Yep. This is a third of a cup of milk. Um, that just gets added in. And the, the trick is when we start mixing this, you got to go slowly. Right. Otherwise, you'll wear the milk. Mm -hmm. um, on top of here is going to be a couple teaspoons of lime juice. Oh, wow. So then just a little lime juice. That gives you your nice acid okay. in, in your Asian cooking. And what are all our spices These here? are the, the spiciness comes in. So we've got a little bit of um, 
sugar, yep. a little bit of cayenne, and then a little bit of powdered ginger. Oh. So that'll get added Interesting. in here. Okay. I'm going to get rid of these real sure. quick. And then um, I'm going to just start, and you can either use a whisk okay. or a spatula, but All the best right. thing to do is just going to be to kind of get these, hmm. um, whatever you're more comfortable with, yep. get these good and combined. Okay. Um, and you want just a real nice, it'll be a little looser than normal peanut butter, obviously, with the milk in there. So do you have to chill it before, or, or, or I mean, do you have to chill it then and let it set, or, or you just, just whisk it up like this and, and take it with you? Uh, just whisk it up and then obviously throw it in the cooler because it's got milk in there. Okay. But when you get down there, um, it'll be easier to dip your saute in it. Sure. Sorry. No um, problem. When it's not as cold. Okay. So when you get down there, pull it out, and let it come to room temperature. Mm -hmm. um, it can sit at room temperature for up to four hours. That's your safe zone okay. with any of that stuff. So here you got Very it. Good. Stick it in sure. whatever you want to take with you to the game yep. and you're good to go. Perfect. So I've we'll, got to try that. All righty. So next mm. thing we're going to do is we're going to start going into a marinade. And this marinade you start, um, mix it in a bowl and we're going to save half of it to um, brush your skewers with oh, when you're cooking, when you're them. cooking them. Yeah, and so the important thing about marinade, if you're going to use that to brush any of your meat, you save half and never touch the raw, and anything goes gotcha. in the raw gets discarded yep. for food Good safety. Good food safety tip. Yeah, so we're going to start, I'm going to start with it into a, just a pole, okay. and then we'll go ahead and go into Ziploc. Okay. Um, in here I have just a little bit of an Asian dressing. Really? This is um, a low fat Asian dressing that you can buy at the grocery store. Choose whatever variety you'd like. Mm. Um, this is a little bit of a sesame okay. ginger one. So we're going to add that in. Yeah. In the bowl here. And we've got a number of other spices there. What, what do you have there? Um, next in here, we're going to use some fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. So that kind of mirrors the, the yep. ginger that's in here. This is a fresh one. We've got a little bit of brown sugar. Mm. So it'll give you a little bit of nice caramelization Sweet. on the grill too when you do that. And then it's fresh cilantro. Oh. So kind of giving you a lot of people think of cilantro as a, more of a Mexican yeah, ingredient. Spanish, but yeah. it kind of gives you a, a better um, flavor, rounding out the flavor in that. Oh, that's great. So we're going to dump Just this dump one in. Dump all those in. Yeah. And the nice trick, ooh, the nice <laughs> trick about marinades is that um, we're going to use a Ziploc bag, oh. and so you don't really even have to stir all of that together. Really? I'm going to stir half of it so that we can reserve um, some, of some of it back to use later. Yeah, and I can sure hold that Ziploc for you, you if that you like. For me? You bet. So we're going to get this stirred up. Yeah. Real nice, and you're just combining those ingredients, okay? Um, so that when they're mixed together on the grill and you brush them sure. on there, you have an equal distribution of all your flavors. Well, this is easier than I thought. I saw all these ingredients. See? Okay, about half of it. Yeah, so we'll do we about half in there. Put that in our fridge, keep it in our cooler. Yep, and this will need to go game. with you to the game. So, yep. like I said, it goes in a little bowl. Um, make sure you bring a pastry brush with you, so that'll okay. be important. Very I'm going to stick this up here for later. All right. So, what I'm going to show you now is is how to um, slice some of this top round. This this recipe calls for a pound of top round. Excellent. Um, it's one of the 29 lean cuts. I was going to say, yeah. So, and it's a great Good. use for round. Um, it does need to be marinated, so that's kind of where this goes. And this recipe mm -hmm. is best marinated anywhere from um, um, 30 minutes to two hours. Okay. We usually recommend that full two hours okay. to um, help all the flavors and the acid that's in this marinade to kind of do its magic. Sure. Um, that's why it's great. You can do it at home, the drive time. By the time you get there, you're ready to go. There we go. Perfect. Um, we're going to do nice thin slices. Okay. Um, we're going to be putting those nice thin slices onto the skewers. Ah. And um, most people generally think of satay as a, a chicken Asian dish. Right. And this is a great combination to use the beef flavors mm. and Asian. It's just something a little different. That's so. Great. Um, you want to do real nice long strips, strips uh -huh. and only about an eighth of an inch thick because okay. they only cook on the grill for a couple minutes, so I you see. want them thin. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice a nice long strip yep, down. Yep. You can um, have this done for you at your butcher if you want to. I see. If they'll do it, another trick to do when you're trying to slice meat is if it's pretty chilled, like it's come out not hard frozen, yep. but it'll slice thin easier oh. when you're using it really, really chilled. Oh, okay. So that's another trick for that. That's a good idea. So I'm just going to do three yep. slices here and then good. show you. I've got a plate that's over here. Oh, perfect. After it's um, marinated. And these are, actually we can throw these, I'll show you real quick. Sure. Just go ahead and throw these in into your that. Ziploc yeah. and marinated. get out all the air. So you yep. kind of roll it, yep. roll it towards you okay, and then like, make sure you, you close like your that, Ziploc. And then it's ready to go in the cooler. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, and so the more you toss it up, the more it gets yeah. incorporated. Cool. Um, now when you get down to the game, 
get your table set up and yep. you get your either grill pan if you need to use that uh, yep. or your regular charcoal grill hot. Okay. Um, we're going to use some skewers mm -hmm. and these skewers make sure you soak them in water. Okay. I can tell you a real easy trick <laughs> with um, if you don't soak them you're going to burn them and then you'll be pulling strips <laughs> of meat off the grill without anything to hold on to. It's a little challenging. Okay. Uh, little water bottles. Okay. You can unscrew the top, take out a Oh and a just stick them in there. And just sip them in oh, there. Oh that's a good And then kind idea. of rotate them if you need to. That Perfect. way there's no extra container, no mess. Perfect. Okay. Um, the trick with these is you take one end yeah. and you're going to kind of weave them all on here and then pull them down. I see. It's the easiest way to do that. Right. So well, show us how to do we'll that. We'll take one piece yeah. and I'm going to start, give it a little bit of a tail. Yeah. And then I'm just going to continue to weave. Oh, I and see. And you go about every inch. About every is inch. It's an okay. easy thing. And Good. I always leave mine all together close oh, and really? then I'll spread it out. Spread it out later. So if you try to push them down, then you're fighting yourself. I see. So I always do mine all up tight. Up on the top like here, okay. and then I will slowly you kind of look like ribbon just, candy. Sure, just so you kind of un yeah push them down, huh. and you want a little bit of the the snake like yeah. ribbon effect. All right. um, it'll help with cooking quickly yep. on both sides. Yep. So that's a real quick easy. Oh, that's cool. Um, and they're all skewered. Oh, that take like very I said, long. this is something that can be done um, right when you get down there. Bring a glove or something that way you can wash your hands. Sure. Um, but you're all set. Get them all skewered, and then we're ready to yep. go to grill. So then they're all skewered, and then we'll move. Over and just stick these right on the grill or on the grill pan. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab these just with, with my fingers. Sure. And basically, these are a quick, like two to three minutes. Oh, they're okay. quick because yeah. they're real thinly sliced. Yeah. So you'll do them about a minute and a half, two minutes on one side. We're going to brush them with some of that leftover marinade. Sure. And then they're ready to go. Outstanding. So, got a so it's quick real and easy. Nice, yeah. yeah. No medium kidding. heat on here. Going to throw these little easy guys to, on. Easy to eat while you're standing around with folks. And yeah, and and the nice thing is, is most people think of, oh, I'm going to go to the, to the tailgate and I'm going to have to eat hamburgers and hot dogs. Hot dogs, yeah. And this is something that if people are trying to be conscious of carbs, they're yeah. not eating a bunch of buns. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of p pair this with some Asian style salads, some Asian coleslaws. That way oh, you get yeah. your cucumbers and your nice vegetables with it. Oh. You got a little peanut butter, so that kind of gives you an extra little piece of protein in there. And while you're turning those, it looks like this is what we end up with. This is this looks great, you know what? Yeah, that's just a, a nice platter that we put together. Yeah. Um, and then you've got this uh, again, this peanut sauce here and, and I can tell you that that tasted fantastic. Well this is a great new twist on a typical tailgating party and I appreciate you uh, coming and sharing uh, these ideas with us. Uh, if you want more information on this and other great beef recipes, just visit us at cattleman cattleman.org. These days, more cattlemen choose Draxon to fight BRD than any other brand. Here's why. It works. We have uh, fewer uh, repulls, and the ones that we do repull respond, and we have fewer chronics in the end. To retreat anything is, it's a lot more expensive than using Draxon as the first time. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts retreats by 50%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see why Draxon should be your first choice to fight BRD. Basically what it's allowed us to do with our operation is run more cattle through in a given period of time. It's just really been a good, good product to use. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Consumers count on America's cattlemen to deliver quality beef every time. So in your daily work to raise cattle, keep quality top of mind in everything you do, in the care, feeding, and handling of your animals. You can be a part of a national program that provides sound, proven guidelines for beef cattle production that will establish you as a leader and responsible stockman. Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, is a national program funded by the Beef Checkoff that can help you strengthen your operation, improve cattle care, drive more value to the bottom line, and increase consumer confidence in the quality of America's beef. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because of their commitment to be the world's best producers of beef and because assuring beef quality is our job, not someone else's. Find out how you can become BQA certified. Visit the website bqa.org. If you're looking for a stress-free beef meal for your family, 
we have just a perfect recipe for you. And joining us today is Laura Hagen from the uh, culinary team at uh, NCBA. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Well, tell us what you've got here. It looks a little bit like okay. hamburger helper, but I bet you're going to oh, tell us it's something never, else. Never, never. We wouldn't make hamburger <laughs> helper in my home. That's right. Or in our NCBA That's right. offices. What is um, this? Essentially, we're making um, we're, we're making it very easy for people around the holidays when yep. they want to switch and kind of stay away from the big roasts and stay away from the big birds and all that kind of thing. Right. When you're done with that or if you're not in the mood to do that and you Busy want something shopping, simple, yeah. yeah, stress. this is supposed to be stress-free for you. Perfect. So basically what we've done is we've taken some ground beef okay. and ground beef is really neat. It's very versatile. Yeah. Um, you can actually get ground beef that's like 96% fat. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 96% <laughs> lean, <laughs> exactly. right? 96% lean and 4% fat, or yeah. you can go, um, this is a 90% and 10. Sure. And you can go even to the 80-20, which, which obviously will just give you a little bit more liquid, a little bit more um, grease will come out. Sure. So if I were doing a, um, a fattier yeah. um, cut uh, or ground beef, then I would probably take this out and drain it so I that see. I can get rid of any extra oil. Right. So why, why end up having that in your right. dish itself? But with a 90-10. Yeah, 90-10 is pretty lean. 96, um, of course, Four. is gonna be a little bit better than that. But as you can see, We've just put it in a pan and we browned it. It usually yeah. takes anywhere from about eight to 10 minutes. And you wanna make sure it's good and done. Yeah. Um, clear liquids, gonna, right? Yeah, clear liquid. You, you just wanna get rid of that pink cast. Yeah. It's very hard to measure temperature on yeah. ground beef, obviously, yeah. but we like to cook it to 160 degrees. Yeah. So it's nice to get it all done. It's not gonna change really the texture of it. Yeah. You don't really overcook it, right. especially when you're using it like this and it's in crumbles. Yeah. So basically that's just gonna cook for a little bit longer here. Couple then, pounds or? That's actually about two pounds. Two pounds, yeah. Yep. And then we're actually gonna talk a little bit about the pasta. Okay. Okay. So instead of having to heat up boiling water, as we know in Colorado, it takes longer to heat yep. water, At right? Hard, harder to get it to boil. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cook our pasta in the liquids that are going to be a part of this whole dish. Oh, really? Yeah, so we're gonna use a can, just a simple can of, I like to use reduced um, sodium beef stock okay. that you can just buy in a can hmm. at the grocery store. And then we're also using Italian style diced tomatoes. Okay. So these already have some basil, some oregano, a little bit of garlic in them. Okay. So you've got all your flavors. No other seasoning needs to go in and there. And no water. No water. Okay. The diced tomatoes will release some water. Yeah. And there's also quite a bit of sauce in the pan. Oh, outstanding. And with the stock, you're obviously going to be using that as well. What you need to make sure you do, of course, is you need to make sure as you're cooking the pasta, you kind of keep pushing it down. Okay. Make sure that you're actually don't getting have any crunchy to, pieces. Right. You don't want to have <laughs> some crunchy pieces on there. Yeah. And that'll take anywhere from probably 10 or 15 minutes, but super okay. simple. And you just kind of keep it on a medium heat and let it go. Okay. So essentially, the only other ingredient we're going to add to this, other than a little topping, is zucchini. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Um, zucchini is actually just a really great vegetable. Um, people during the summer, of course, are. <laughs> Growing, growing it like crazy, exactly. Um, but it's available year round. Yeah. And all we did is take the zucchini yes. and create these little coins. Easy enough. You know, frankly, you can cut it in any type of way you want. Yeah. The key is with any type of vegetable when you're cooking it all in the same pot, you want to make sure that you're cooking them, um, you're cutting them in consistent. Oh, so they pieces. have Yeah, I mean, you don't want to cut yeah. something, you know, super skinny and, and then, then big, put right? one in like this, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly, all right, gotcha. <laughs> so we're just going to do about a quarter inch okay. slice sure. like that. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's super enough. simple. And this is actually going to come in to play here. After you add the hamburger or before? Um, and actually, we add the, I like to add the hamburger right at the end. Oh, okay. So that it doesn't, um, you, you can kind of judge how much liquid you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to put these in here. Yeah. It's about two cups. Outstanding. Um, and we're going to mix those in there. And just let those... Those will cook for about five minutes. About five minutes, all right. Yeah, the thinner you cut them, obviously, the thinner yeah. or, or the you know, shorter period of time it'll take to get them done. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot of color. Yeah, doesn't it? It yeah. looks real pretty. And you're adding some, you're sneaking in a vegetable. Vegetable, that's and right. And it also tastes just like tomatoes and pasta. Yeah. So you can kind of sneak that in for the exactly. kids. Exactly, right? yep. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our beef here. Yep. And we're going to put that right in here. Outstanding. And we're going to toss it all together. And you've got a dish that you can... Super easy. Very easy and very quick on those uh, those busy school nights or like you say, the busy holiday. Mm -hmm. I am going, while well, you're finishing that, I'm going to sure. try a piece of this here. What do you think? I love it. Yeah, I love the Italian flavoring. You can really tell them. Yeah, and I should mention tomatoes. too mm -hmm. that we also put a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So that just adds a little mm -hmm. bit of flavor mm -hmm. and a little bit of saltiness. Mm -hmm. And then we just put a little breadstick on the side. That's great. My kids love this. Good. Yeah. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. You bet. Appreciate it.
For more information and other great beef recipes, visit cattleman2cattleman.org. Beef is great to incorporate into your holiday celebration, so why not a beef appetizer for your guests? Here with us today to teach us about an easy appetizer that includes beef is Chenoa French. Thanks for coming back to Thanks the show. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about these uh, beef pinwheels. All right, we're going to do a real quick, easy recipe. Okay. Um, this is a great appetizer that you can keep in your, keep four simple ingredients in your freezer. And so you get that last minute party invite. Yeah. And your wife's like, what am I going to make? <laughs> Here, it's four quick ingredients out of the freezer Perfect. and you're set to go. Yeah. Um, this is also something that can be made a couple days ahead and kept in the refrigerator and then just slice and bake. Oh, that's great. So we're going to start here with some puff pastry. Okay. This is usually found in the local freezer section and um, it just needs to be slacked out on the counter okay. for about 45 minutes to an hour before you're going to use it. Okay. So you want it kind of pliable. Right. Um, it comes with two pieces and you will need both of them when you're making this recipe. All right. So we're going to take it and just unfold it. Okay. Um, oh, I see. It's just, you just unroll it. Yeah. So it kind of will come out as a little sheet here. I see. And I'm going to, this recipe calls for just cutting this in half. So you start with, okay. with two pieces. Yep. Yep. I'll borrow this from you. I'll let you, yeah, if you want the knife, take the <laughs> I'll knife. I'll take you know, it. I'm going to no slice worries. this right in half. Okay. And we're going to pull them apart a little bit because we'll do them separately. All right. Um, we're going to start with some pre-cooked pot roast. You oh. can find this in, in the local freezer case, refrigerator sure. case, or if you've made pot, pot roast, roast and you and have some, some left over, over. Yeah. Um, it's just the shredded beef part. Sure. So if it's any in gravy, we don't need the gravy part. Yeah. This has been heated up and then um, just shredded by your fingers. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on. want to make sure that we leave a good half of an inch um, so we have some a lip to seal the pinwheel oh, together. To so okay. don't go edge to edge. Okay. Um, you want to get good coverage on both sides. Pretty thick or not? Um, don't get it too thick because you need to be able to roll it. Oh, okay. Just like when you're making burritos, you don't yeah, want to over roll them because then they, they bust type thing. <laughs> so that's what my problem is. Yeah, being. don't over stuff them uh, okay. is the trick. Yeah. So um, a good, nice layer, you know, like I said, cover out okay. to both sides so yep. that you get a good piece yep. on either end. Yeah, that's perfect. So, and then the next thing we're going to move on to is Asiago cheese. Oh, yeah. Um, this is just a shredded. You can either buy it shredded or you can buy it in a, in a square and shred it yourself, okay. whichever is easiest. Sprinkle that on, mm -hmm. make it nice and gooey a little yeah, bit. Yeah, again, not too much. Um, right. Otherwise, you'll be having um, things ooze and you can't get your your pinwheel rolled okay. tight. That's good. So a good topping on there. That's perfect. Beef and cheese, it's looking good you, so far. You can't complain, right? No kidding. But what, what's what's the green stuff? The next one, these are just green onions. Oh, okay. And so I've taken them and cut them in half lengthwise and then again um, in half. So you have nice thin strips on them. I see. And you're going to lay them on here. Um, just nice with the length of, of the puff pastry. Okay. If you don't want to cut them this way and you want to just chop them, I see. you can. This will just give you a more even distribution okay. of the onions. All right. So I don't love them, so I'm only going to put a couple on there. Okay. But if you love more, you can uh, yeah. you can add All right. them. All right. So the next thing is we're going to just take them and roll it oh, I up see. this way. And this last little lip, we're going to brush with a little bit of water to kind of seal seal the edge together. Oh, I see. So that I'm going to just use a, a pastry buff, brush. And just go real okay. light across the edge. So you're thinking that's about a half inch or so. Yeah, yeah, just that nice so you get Very good. kind of a seal. Okay. Start with your long end. Yeah. And again, you just kind of roll, roll them. Roll it up gently. Yeah. Huh? That's great. Do a nice little roll. Kind of tuck your, your little pieces in there. Yeah. Roll towards the outside. I see. And then you Voila. stick them down. So this is at the point if you wanted to make this a couple days ahead. Right. You would get to this point and then wrap them in saran wrap real tight and then you put them in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. So at this point you could do all four sets, be put ready. them in the refrigerator and that way they're ready to go. That's this is one that I did earlier uh -huh. and then the next step is going to be to take this and cut them in about a half an inch oh. pieces all the way down. So if you want to go ahead I and can start do that, that part of it. That's yeah. good. I see. Without trying to, to yeah, smush them too yeah, much, don't right? Them. The important thing is to have a real nice sharp knife. There you go. So that you have that. And I've I've oh, done a you've done dozen it. or Perfect. so up ahead. Yeah. So we'll what you'll do is you slice them down and then you yep. kind of lay them on, on there, a baking huh? sheet. Perfect. Yep. Good. Just like um, that. If you're not going to use parchment, make sure you spray your cookie sheet okay. just so that they don't stick. Okay. And then they go into a hot oven and they, they really only cook for 12 to 15 minutes. So I see. the most important thing is is that you don't over brown okay. your pastry. At about how many degrees? Uh, I think it's 375, 400. Oh okay. I know it's it's written on there, Fantastic. but it's it's that hot oven and so you cook them and, and they're quick and then they come out and oh, outstanding. you can serve them warm or if you need to wrap them and take them to a party, you can do that. Sure. Um, on this platter, we paired it with a little brick of the Asiago cheese and some mm. grapefruit so that you can kind of have that complete 
platter when you go to the guests. That's great. I, I like that. That's a that's a great way to feature beef at, at appetizer or for an appetizer. And so many times we see chicken and everything else served except beef. Well, and it's a great thing. A lot of people are doing pot roasts in the mm -hmm. winter time and around the holidays, and it, it's that leftover that I can use this yeah, for a quick last minute invite. Thanks for that idea. <laughs> I welcome. really appreciate that. Thank you so much. For more information on this and other great beef recipes, visit us at cattlemanatcattlemen.org. Comprehensive, practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive Igenity profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit igenity.com or call 1 877 igenity to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting-edge technologies and data-driven decision-making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits. With five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedYards.com. All I want for Christmas is whatever you can leave, but I'd settle for a new wife who would stay through New Year's Eve. <laughs> That's Margaret. That's Margaret. <laughs> Trust. Out here, it's that rare combination of reliability, integrity, and the peace of mind that comes with having both. After 20 years of making hitches, the B&W Turnover Ball has become the most trusted gooseneck hitch in the country. Why is that important? Because trust is not only hard to earn, it's hard to find. The Turnover Ball Gooseneck Hitch by B&W. Trusted. One of the most formidable forces in nature is the salesman at the top of his game. They can stop wars, stampedes, hurricanes, tight ends, and lemmings in their tracks. Why, if it weren't for salesmen, Henry Ford would just be an obscure inventor. The Appaloosa horse would not exist, and public TV would still be airing Lou Grant reruns. You can see these salesmen on long country roads, headed to the next call, going over their sales pitch, or listening to self-help CDs. Or you can spot them eating supper alone at restaurants that offer home cooking all the time, preparing for tomorrow and their next big chance to prove they have what it takes. The power of persuasion, the patience of redwood, and the persistence of black mold in your drywall to wear the title of super. Sales. Slicker than deer guts on a doorstep. Smooth as a filly's nose. Here in this jug's a miracle drug so new that nobody knows. Feed it, inject it, or plant it, stick it under an ear. Pick any breed, results guaranteed. The data's perfectly clear. It's good for foot rot and gophers, chafing on buffalo thighs, horses with corns and angus with horns, and girls with fire in their eyes. Goats with a bad disposition, lovers losing their spark, turpentine cats and blindfolded bats and dogs that forgot how to bark. Friends, are you troubled with hatred? Kids all down with the flu. Cattle won't gain, need more rain. I'll tell you what this will do. Kill all the weeds in your garden, patch up your inner tube, leaven your bread and stiffen your thread and work out your Rubik's Cube. Give you more miles per gallon, relieve your gastric distress. And if that ain't enough, this wonderful stuff eats barbecue stains off your dress. I see you don't quite believe me. Well, the best I saved for last. Pay me the cash, 
then quick as a flash. See? I went too fast. Okay, we'll do it again. Watch and you'll understand, safe and improved, it gently removes a $5 bill from your hand. This is Baxter Black from Alzheimer. Thanks, Baxter. We'll be right back. Working Ranch Magazine savvies the challenges and rewards of those who make a living on the ranch. From pretty loops in the Brandon Pen to cold nights Gavin Heifers, we cover the real deal. Subscribe today. Go online to workingranchmag.com or give us a call. We'll fix you right up. You can also visit us in person at the NCBA convention. Working Ranch, your ranch, your magazine. Welcome back. Let's see where this week's legacy photos take us. Send us your favorite photos from this past summer. To do so, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And we'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.